You've got a new project called MTB. Can you tell me what it is you're doing? Because it seems quite ambitious. It's in a lot of countries, isn't it? It, it, it is. Um, it's a, the, the NTB project is a project with three organizations, uh, Partners in Health, Doctors Without Borders, and Interactive Research and Development, which is a small NGO out of Pakistan. Partners in Health is a large US one, and I think everyone knows Doctors Without Borders. Um, we're getting sponsored by an organization called UnitAid. Their, um, their mission is to um, improve access to commodities for HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. And they, are, uh, they, they fund grants. Um, they raise a lot of their money from attacks on airlines. You might, uh, you might have heard of them. And so they're funding a four-year project, $60 million, um, uh, across 17 countries to really get the use of two new tuberculosis drugs out there. Um, we haven't had a new tuberculosis drug, um, you know, uh, TB purpose only drug in 40 years in the medical community. And two have come out in the last year or so. Um, and you would think that we would be using them all around the world, you know, very quickly. But in fact, they're not being used very much yet because there are some barriers. And this project is really to understand uh, how to best use them, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Can you tell me what are the barriers that are preventing these promising new drugs from being used? Sure, so both of the drugs have only gotten uh, conditional approval from uh, regulatory authorities in the US and Europe. Uh, the reason is um, they viewed MD multi drug resistant tuberculosis as such an emergency that they should approve these drugs on limited data because patients don't have much option. So we don't know a great deal about how these medicines work in the drug regimens that we use to treat drug resistant TB. And I think people are just, um, many countries, their national TB programs, just don't have the, um, the experience and the um, capacity to really introduce a new agent that they don't know a lot about. And so they choose just to kind of stick with the old regimen, which likely is inferior to the, to, to the use of new, these new drugs. And could you remind me of just the size of the challenge facing doctors and clinicians with multi-drug resistant TB? Sure, the, the challenge is about 400,000 cases worldwide arise each year. Only about um, 20, uh, you know, 20% uh, or, uh, uh, you know, a, a quarter of them are being diagnosed and then even fewer of them are, are, are being put on treatment. Um, and the treatment we have right now, the biggest challenge is that this treatment is very long, very expensive, very toxic to the patient, causes a lot of side effects, everything from going deaf to renal failure to uh, considerable nausea and vomiting. It's almost like a cancer chemotherapy that the regimen we have now. The new drugs hopefully will, will make those regimens more tolerable, be able to substitute out for drugs, uh, and use them uh, in patients who have high resistance, um, particularly that even to the, to the regimens we're using now. Now, it's comparatively early days yet, but what have you found so far that clinically might be useful? So the two new drugs are called bedaclean and delaminid, um, and they, so far we've found uh, there has been some clinical trials with them, and they've showed that they do, uh, they are associated with a better cure rate, um, they do have some side effects and some unknown uh, maybe safety concerns that we need to uh, find out more about. Uh, we've used them outside of the clinical trials in what we call compassionate use or early access and we've seen very promising results meaning that patients who had very high resistance, very hard to cure, were actually curing those patients with these drugs. So they're very, very promising. Now, how do you balance the priorities between introducing new agents and trying things like the shorter regimens for drug-resistant TB? Sure, so part of this NTB project, um, one is just getting the new drugs out there according to WHO indications of how to use these new drugs. The second part is going to be a large clinical trial where we're gonna test over nine different unique regimens that are much uh, shorter, they're novel regimens, so it's a clinical trial that uh, will compare these different regimens to um, a standard, um, the standard treatment. Um, they'll all be nine months in length, these regimens. Um, and so we, to really figure out how to best use these new regimens in shorter 
in, in overall short of time, the standard regimen is 20 months, we want to get it down to nine or even lower, um, we really do need to do some kind of uh, research to figure out if it's safe to do that and, and the optimal way to do that. And so it's going to take some time, but uh, we're going to try to move forward as quickly as we can in that area. Can you give any guidance now, do you think? Uh, have you any preliminary recommendations to pass on about the whole approach to drug resistance TB? Um, sure. I mean, it is, a, it is still a treatable disease with the regimen we have. Um, and I think patients need to be strongly supported on this regimen because it is so hard to take. So that's going to improve their ability to take it, it, whether that's support for treating side effects, whether it's they're coming from a very low social economic uh, condition that will require social and economic support. Um, um, so my, my advice now is to uh, you know, that MDR-TB is a treatable disease. We need to get the medicines, what we have out there now. We need to introduce these new drugs as quickly as possible, but we need to support the patient while they're on treatment. Well, you say support the patients. Uh, it is a clearly an organizational challenge, not just a clinical one. Yeah. It's not just a matter of applying known right. techniques. How do you face those challenges of integrating care into communities and different communities in your 17 countries? Yeah. Uh, it's a great question. A lot of things that we've gone to in, in many of the countries is a system where a, um, a healthcare worker or a community health volunteer will visit the patient every day. Uh, we call it accompaniment. They're going to accompany the patient during the treatment every day. They do uh, observe them taking the treatment, uh, but it's more a, a system of support. Uh, sometimes we give direct packages of nutrition packages or even cash transfers to the patient just so that they are able to survive and uh, live and as they take this very difficult treatment so things like uh, things like this are needed in addition to you know the medicines being free to the patient and not having any uh, uh, out of pocket most most people even if they come from a middle social economic uh, condition cannot afford the MDR TB treatment and could never take it if, the, if we charge for the, what the medicines cost. It's mm. a, probably about five thousand uh, dollars for a treatment of MDR. -TB. Sounds daunting on the cost level when you really roll this out. Then yeah. Um, well, it, even though uh, you know that sounds like a lot of money, and you know in the United States we'll spend a million dollars a patient a year, you know, for to uh, extend uh, even one life of <laughs> of care. Um, and this is actually even at $5,000 a treatment and added money for social and economic support, um, it it's a very cost effective uh, uh, treatment in terms of saving lives. And, uh, and then the other thing is that doesn't even take into consideration if you do nothing, how the cost of it being spread to other people. So it's really, you know, pay now and uh, or pay a whole heck of a lot more later if you don't pay now. Mm. Well, based on your experience so far then, could you give me finally just very briefly a few do's and don'ts for care teams all over the world? Do, you know, always suspect tuberculosis in your patients that have uh, symptoms consistent with it. Get a diagnosis. I think every TB patient uh, should be, you know, determined if they have MDR TB treatment or I, I have multi-drug resistance uh, you know, there and to get them on the right regimen. Um, and I think um, you know, the, the, the real do is to uh, find the cases, treat them, and uh, support the patient while they're on this very difficult treatment.